Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And welcome back to Ilal Live. My name is Faraz Patel. We'd like to thank you for staying with us. I'd like to also thank my colleague, Lukman Shadrak, for taking you through that first one hour. Now, South Africa's 81% illiteracy rate amongst grade fours has prompted several organizations to launch the Right to Read campaign to mobilize civil society to make early grade literacy a national priority. On this World Literacy Day, there is a continuous emphasis on changing this 81% to 100% literacy rate. Joining us now is Senior Leg Attorney at the Legal Research Council, Cameron McConaughey. Cameron, good day and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm at the uh, Legal Resources Center. Thank you so much for correcting me on that, uh, uh, Cameron. No problem. Um, Cameron, let's talk about the realistic expectations in turning around this 81% illiteracy rate. I mean, what are the chances of that actually happening given the environment in which many of these pupils find themselves in? Um, so, um, obviously, literacy rates took a huge dip um, during the COVID pandemic. Um, but the estimates are that if we return to the the improvement rate of pre-COVID, which is likely to happen. Um, I mean, there's nothing to suggest that we wouldn't, that we, we should go back to, I mean, we're sort of back to a pretty normal schooling, uh, which is quite poor, but it is uh, back to what it was. Um, it will take 86 years uh, before all children um, are able to read uh, for meaning at, by, the, by grade four. So that, that's how, that's the sort of the trajectory of improving. So, you know, we, the, the country, it is improving, but it's just incredibly slow. Um, and obviously 86 years, you know, another almost another century before we get to where we need to be. Um, that's just not, it's, 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 it's not acceptable. Um, so the campaign is really about recognizing that children do have a right to read. So we know that there's a right to basic education in section 29 of our constitution. And we really want to expand on what that means. Uh, we believe that it's critical that we understand that children actually have a right to read uh, for meaning, uh, because if they can't read for meaning, as we know, um, sort of the whole house crumbles. Um, there's no foundation. And after grade four, uh, or from grade four onwards, um, you're not being taught how to read. You're being expected to read in, in order to learn. Um, so yeah, so we do believe that um, it's, you know, it's realistic to, it, it can be turned around and it can be improved, but we think that uh, some things need to change. And that's what this campaign is about, um, trying to ensure that those changes take place. Cameron, um, a lot of people would say, and it's probably a, a, a quite a popular opinion that sometimes the buck stops with the government, right? And that of course being the basic education department. Now, what, more needs to be done from them and maybe even other stakeholders in trying to make sure that this literacy rate finds some sort of uh, ability to climb. Yeah. So um, we are very, we recognize that the Department of Basic Education has a lot of good ideas. They've got some excellent policies, um, lots of good strategies. Um, but unfortunately, nothing is binding, <clears throat> and these are just plans. Um, so, so from 2008, there was a, rap, a national reading plan. Uh, we've had umpteen uh, various iterations uh, or various reading plans and policies, drop everything and read. Uh, every province has got their own uh, reading plan or reading policy, and they all make sense, and they're all pretty good. Um, uh, some are better than others. But until they, uh, but the, the problem is they're just not implemented. Um, and they're not implemented for a number of reasons. One, often the schools and the teachers don't even know about them. They're not well communicated. Uh, often they're not well funded. Um, so the funding to do whatever it is that's in the plan isn't there. Um, uh, and so there's, there's a number of reasons that they're not being implemented. And that's what we're really saying is we think that there need to be binding regulations. Um, so these good plans and policies need to be converted into something that must happen. 
Um, and if it's a law, which must happen, uh, then the provinces and the Department of Education will be obliged to fund these plans uh, because there are regulations. Um, so that's really what we're calling for, is we're calling for binding regulations on four specific or four particular things. Um, the regulations could and probably will encompass other things, we hope, um, but there's four sort of like non-negotiables, and those are uh, the first one, which is the most important one, but everyone agrees that, you know, we have to have good quality teachers. Um, and there are a lot of, um, there are training uh, literacy courses that can be taken. Um, I know that Rhodes University offers one. It's sort of an advanced course in literacy. It's over a two-year period. And there's other courses. But, you know, every foundation phase teacher teaching grade R up to grade three needs to be an expert in teaching literacy. Um, so that's the first thing, and we think that that should be mandatory. Um, so it'll be both for teachers um, coming from universities, so before they go into service, and then those that are actually, if they're already in the service, are already teaching, um, they need to undergo training. And that's something that the experts in literacy and higher education, etc., can uh, need to flesh out how that would work. Um, so that's the first one. I'll run through the others a bit more quickly. Um, so that's teachers, um, then text. Um, there have to be enough uh, books, readers, flashcards, posters, the alphabet, all of those things which we know are required um, to teach literacy in the classrooms. There have it's got, there has to be a minimum package, non-negotiable. Every every class gets it. Every kid has what they need. Um, and so yeah, so that's the second thing. The third thing is around time, which we don't think will require too much changing. Uh, the national curriculum policy is is fairly clear on what is supposed to happen. It's just more about monitoring and making sure that the, the correct amount of time is actually spent in the classroom on literacy. And then the last thing is testing. Um, you know, every every four or five years, or every five years, there's a, an international study on our literacy rates, which we then look at and we get a big shock at how badly we're doing. But there needs to be ongoing assessment. So the teachers uh, so the children are assessed and we know where they're at every step of the way. So from right from the beginning, from grade one, you know, we're, we're testing them on how well do they know their alphabet. Um, and we can pick up so that problems can be identified early on um, and the teachers can get in there and try and, and, and remedy them. Um, and that would also provide, uh, you know, province, prov provincial government and national government with good data on where the problems are, which areas need more attention. Uh, which schools are struggling, which circuits are struggling, um, so, that, so that interventions can be uh, more directed or, or better directed um, to improvement. So the, those are known as the four T's. So, you know, improve teaching, improve teachers through training, um, more testing, text in schools, and enough text, um, and then enough time being spent on it. And that's what we'd like those regulations to, um, to contain at a minimum. Uh, Cameron, within those four T's that you are mentioning, uh... Within the space of time that Right to Read has about, I mean, which ones do you feel are realistically in the short term achievable and which ones would look from a long term perspective for this to be achieved? So I think that there's probably already, so there's already agreement on all four of them um, in the sense that these are things that the government itself has said needs to happen. Um, but um, I think like the easiest one would probably be the text. They've all, we've already, the, there's been a number of uh, minimum packages that have been agreed upon, like this is what is needed. Um, so I don't think it would take too long uh, for that to be rolled out, uh, to be upscaled and rolled out. Um, but uh, yeah, it would just take uh, provinces being required to uh, prioritize their budgets in a way to ensure that those, those literacy uh, packages are rolled out. So I think that that would probably be an easy one that could probably be done quite quickly. Um, uh, the one that would probably take a bit longer would be to ensure that all teachers are trained. Uh, that's probably a more, you know, five to 10 year pro project. Um, but hopefully it could be scaled up fairly quickly. Um, uh, and as long as, you know, the universities make the correct changes now, all new uh, teachers that are tra being trained coming into the system, they would already, they would be experts. Um, and then it would just be a case of sort of catching up uh, with the, the teachers that are already in the system. 
Cameron, we've just got time for one final question in around one and a half minutes. Uh, is there a correlation uh, uh, in terms of certain factors from an environment point of view which hinders children's focus on reading? I, I ask that because we go to a number of the uh, rural areas or the townships and, for example, one of the challenges are pit toilets. And when you deny that basic human right, your concentration levels do go down. So uh, in terms of just the outside factors that influence children, more needs to be done there isn't to make sure that if the human rights from uh, the basic human rights that are in our constitution are fulfilled, then that can lead to a better focus and better concentration on children reading. Is there some sort of a correlation with regards to that? Absolutely. I think you, you've hit on it. I mean, I think some environments lend themselves um, to children being more likely to, to read. And I think, uh, or to, to, you know, if it's a, if it's a, a literacy-rich environment where you've got books around you, um, if you've eaten enough food and you're not, you know, you're, you're mentally and physically feeling strong, um, I think, you know, if there's, you know, you're not being, there's not violence in your community and things like that. I think those, those are all things that are going to definitely impact on your ability to, to focus on your literacy. Uh, if you've got 50 or 60 children in a classroom, of course, it's going to be much more difficult for that, for, for that uh, engagement on literacy to take place. So, yeah, we, we don't for a minute think that regulations are a silver bullet, that they'll solve, that it'll just magically make it happen. But we do think that regulations will bring a, a particular focus um, and, and clarify exactly what some of the, the obligations are of the state to make sure that, um, that the children are receiving those inputs that are most likely to um, in, ensure that they're able to read for meaning by the age of 10. Cameron, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Much appreciated. Thank you. That's Cameron uh, McConaughey. He's a senior attorney at the Legal Resource Center talking to us about uh, World Literacy Day. 81% illiteracy rate here in South Africa. A lot of work to be done. But we have, of course, uh, campaigns like uh, Right to Read who are making that effort. But it's not just them. It, it requires much more other stakeholders, including government, including the Basic Education Department. Now, after the break, uh, I'm going to be chatting to Tariq Musa. Now, he went to the United Kingdom for the Gravity Show. He was one of the top five best performers. And I tell you what, his BMW is something special. After the break, I chat with him. Do stay tuned.